Okay, I'll stop. I promise I'll stop. One more time. Hey, what you making? <laughs> Maureen Haley here. This is the eighth project in my series of eight Raspberry Pi projects plus three bonus pies. Uh, and this is my Bahama Billy Bass project. Uh, I think this is my favorite, so enjoy. This is my Bahama Billy Bass. And so the story is when we were kids, we had this in our family um, camp on the river and uh, you'd either push a button or it had a motion sensor and it would uh, play a song and the fish moves and dances. It's very engaging. So I saw this video by Donald Bell and he was hacking his Billy Bass. I realized that it's just DC motors and sound. So I was a little overconfident. I thought, oh, I know a little bit about DC motors. I've been working on my Tinker Nut motion squirt, motion activated squirt gun for the dog. And I had done this Jeremy Bloom's uh, holiday lights and sounds modification for Halloween. So I thought I knew what I was doing. Uh, <laughs> I was deluded, but that's a good way to go into a project. My first constraint was I did not have a fish. So I put out a call to my maker community and my friend Bill Sandage said, oh, I have a fish you can use and gave me a fish and kind of quietly said some of the gears might not work. It, they didn't. And I worked, tried to fix them and then eventually ordered some new gears and the uh, order form said estimated shipping date zero to 60 days. So the fish went on the shelf. The gears arrived later, months later, I got back to it, put the gears in, and they worked very well. So then my second constraint was that this is a three motor fish. And the original video was a two motor fish, which has to do with like one motor moves the mouth, and in the two motor fish, the same motor moves the tail or the body. And this one has the tail and the body have separate motors, which meant one thing, the code needs to be changed. Uh, so that kind of kicked that down the road. And the other thing was I need to be controlled. Uh, I needed to control three motors and I ended up using an Adafruit motor shield because it can control up to four of them. No problem. I had a little um, feather wing shield and I also had a feather huzzah. So I started working a little bit with the code and getting the motors to move and uh, I kind of got distracted because I realized that the Feather has a board, you know, has an 8266 chip, so it connects to the internet. My plan was to connect the fish to the internet. Uh, I would have a little Amazon micro instance that would run a little code that scrapes meetup.com, sends that to a um, text-to-speech engine, and then so on the micro instance would just be that, pi that, that script and a little audio file, and I would have it rewrite that, you know, a couple times a day or something. And when you push a button, then the Huzzah would just access that cloud micro instance and it would pull down the audio file. So you're probably thinking uh, two things. One, Maureen, that is a brilliant and elegant project plan. And also number two, isn't this a video about Raspberry Pis? And you would be correct. You would be correct on both counts. I was watching, um, well, I was trying to figure out how to uh, get this cloud thing going for free since so far I really wasn't uh, into any money in this fish because I just used things uh, around the house. And I saw uh, Ambrella did on Adafruit's show and tell a thing about text-to-speech on the Pi. And I was like, aha! And so I started playing with that and I, um, for audio out, I'm using a Rasby audio board that I found online. and. Uh, it, it works. And so I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero W and the uh, Raspberry Audio board. I, I wrote a little using and sample script and also Al Swigert's fantastic book, Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. 
uh, wrote a little script. It goes up and it scrapes meetup.com for our makerspaces upcoming events for the next week. Uh, brings it back, back as a JSON object, uh, formats it into a text file. And we... Monday, September 16th. Anyway, it works. Totally works. So I went back to Don Bell's code and he had taken his fish to 11. He worked with uh, coder Jordan Sparks and they wrote uh, better code, state machine. They used the different drivers uh, for the motors and uh, um, added a Bluetooth module and an amplifier and new speakers. I, would co I co copied all their build and then added my Raspberry Pi. Okay, just in case this is, uh, you want to see what's actually going on behind the scenes. From Donald Bell's uh, in, uh, master class, there's a Bluetooth module that takes in, say, your phone signal. It uh, sends a signal out to an amp and then some upgraded speakers. The Bluetooth module, you also run a line off of it to the microcontroller. This is a Feather Huzzah and it runs the code that moves the DC motors of the fish. I'm using a motor shield. The Huzzah also has a 86 or 8266 module. So my original plan was to have this little micro instance in the cloud with scrapemeetup.com, send that to a text-to-speech engine and have a little wave file. When you push the button, the feather would download the wave file and uh, move the fish and send it to the amp. But that's not what I ended up doing. Instead, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 0W and I wrote a little Python script. It goes up to meetup.com and scrapes it, brings down the information as a JSON file, which I format into text. Then when you push the button, uh, the Pi sends the text-to-speech audio both to the amp and to the feather to move the fish. And that's what's going on. I went back and wrote my own state machine and it works. I've had to re record this like three times, uh, mainly because of copyright. I had to take off the Bluetooth m music movement. And then um, one time I was staring at the wrong, at the um, display screen on the camera. One time I chopped off my head. So this is Billy. I'm gonna try and demonstrate him, tell you a little bit about him, but I can't use any music, so I did record uh, this. Hey, what you making? What you making? Let's try it again. Hey, what you making? <laughs> anyway, uh, so he does, the Bluetooth part does work, and uh, the other part is the Raspberry Pi, but there are some things on here I wanted to point out. Um, one of them, oh, I wanted to use, let's see, I think the bottom one is the clock. 540. Oh, I turned the volume down, sorry. Have to do it again. Maybe I turned it up. 5.50 p.m. 5.50 p.m. So that's the rat, that's the clock one, and then this is the events one. Today is Sunday, July twenty fifth. Upcoming events for the cater makers from meetup.com include Wednesday, July twenty eighth, five p.m. Family built night. Wednesday, July twenty eighth, seven p.m. The cater makers open built night. <laughs> Thursday, July twenty ninth, seven p.m. Logoro bookshelf speakers. And that's it. I'm going to turn his volume down, maybe. I might turn it up, however way I do it. Okay, so only three events coming up. When I first started doing this pre-COVID, we had over a dozen. We do have a cool speaker build coming up uh, at our uh, makerspace, Decatur Makers. So uh, a couple of things. This is the original Billy Bass case. And uh, this, uh, what I call a squelch, but it's the potentiometer from uh, the Donald Bell build. And I changed it to a log one, but I, I didn't really notice the difference. And then also on this side is the volume for the uh, amplifier. And then up here, I have a on off, a lighted on off switch for the to shut down the Raspberry Pi safely. 
And then uh, Bill is swimming in a sea of uh, the uh, salt water. I don't think he's a sea bass. But uh, I had these uh, nice high definition pictures from a family trip to the Bahamas and the Abacus Islands. And my plan was I, uh, I masked off his regular case, draped the pictures over and then covered them in a clear resin, which, uh, which was pretty cool, except the resin along the sides got really thin and cracked. So this may not be his final fishing swimming hole. But uh, once he was in a sea, I felt like he really needed to have some sparkly LEDs beneath there. And uh, I searched the internet to find a, a nice twinkle code that didn't use a delay. Except now the only have his uh, LEDs flashing when his tail flips. It really looks more like it's a random LED rather than a twinkle, but I might adjust that. Uh, what else is going on on the fish? Oh, he has a, a laser cut plaque that's molded, it's modeled after the original plaque. And after I wrote the event script, I spent so much time uh, figuring out how to calculate seven days from the time the, button, uh, the code runs uh, and working with uh, the uh, time code, uh, I went ahead and put a clock. So he's kind of a fancy clock. Um, Maybe a bit much for a clock, but I wanted to add that feature. And what else? What else you got, Bill? Oh, the uh, so now I get audio from the Raspberry Pi and audio from the Bluetooth module, and they both go into the amplifier. And I'm sure there's a splitter cable that could do that, but I ended up um, just wiring up my own uh, splitter with resistors and 3D printing a little um, box and putting some DC um, jacks on it and it, it seems to be working pretty well. I do get a little feedback uh, on the, the the lines that go from uh, to the to the feather from the Pi and from the Bluetooth module. They both go to this potentiometer though and I tried putting a splitter on there. It didn't seem to make a difference but I am getting a little feedback and sometimes his he'll flap a little bit uh, seemingly randomly. And I don't think that's in the code. Um, I don't think I put the, the random flap, but I might have. Uh, what else? What else? What else, Bill? Oh, the, oh, another thing is I had a little trouble with uh, power management. I tried to um, solder uh, uh, power to the pads on the back of the Raspberry Pi Zero W. And I ruined a Pi or two doing that. Uh, and you're probably thinking, hey, what about those pogo pins you love so much? But there's a reason I physically did not want the physical stack to be that high so it would fit in this case. Uh, and then I watched uh, maker Melissa, who did a very cool video, and I'll link to it, using a, a microcontroller and a Raspberry Pi. And uh, I just checked out the, the build, build on that video for this uh, DC power splitter cable and then got some little uh, DC adapters for micro USB. And so I put one on each one of them. So I only have one power cable going into them. That seems to simplify the whole situation a little bit. So that's, um, that's, that's Billy Bass. He, uh, it's been a long, strange, fishy trip. And uh, I, I can't wait for other people to make Donald Bell's build so you can see him flipping around to uh, Bluetooth control. Um, I think, uh, let's see if I still have his what you're making. Jamaican. <laughs> hey, what you making? Okay, I'll stop. I promise I'll stop. One more time. Hey, what you This is my final bonus project. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi, and, and I'm using I'm using a power board called Pi Sugar. The Pi Sugar has a very large 1,200 lithium-ion battery, and it's rechargeable. And the idea of this is that 
your Raspberry Pi becomes portable with no wires. So there's a couple of items like this. Uh, I think Pi Juice also makes one. It takes advantage of those power ports on the back of the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, and it uses a rechargeable circuit here on their board. Uh, so you could put a, a battery on it. I think the Pi Juice one, you could put whatever lithium ion, you could put whatever battery you want on it. This one actually came with the battery attached. It's called Pi Sugar. And they have this little case that you can download on uh, GitHub. And of course I downloaded it. I think I made this a little bit larger, put a hole in it, of course, that's what I do. And put this circular LCD screen in it. So what I would be curious about is what, what would be a good LCD project other than a clock or maybe a dial of some sort, something creative. I can't, I haven't been creative, I've been making videos, but um, that is my third bonus pie. I hope everybody, uh, well, everybody, I hope somebody gets inspired to do a project from this. I know I get a, I've gotten a lot of laughs um, sharing my, um, sharing my dog treat dispenser and uh, I've gotten a lot of insight myself having to update and upgrade 11 raspberry pies so some of those will be moved to microcontrollers some of them will be moved hopefully to home assistant anyway thanks for watching and um, get out there and make it good